All right, we have uh, Josh and Adam in the front, but we're going to actually focus on the, the Seth Manfield match in the back here. So we're going to check that out and see what's going on. We were kind of eager to see how Seth's Mardu deck is holding up. It was doing very well yesterday. And the matchup, which was with uh, Josh McLean. Well, it was John, John Stern, but they're both playing the same 75. They actually submitted their decks in the same email, uh, funny enough. So we have Seth on the left here and Kenneth Cordell on the right. The classic Mardu versus Abzan. You yeah, know? the classic battle. Two of the two of the cons of Tarkir clans. Yeah. We were talking about how it's a, a match tale as old as time, you know? Yes. Unfortunately, like, Sultai and uh, Jeskai and what's the, what's the other one? What's the last one? Uh, it's Teamer. Teamer, Teamer yes. doesn't get <laughs> any love. But yeah, those three <laughs> clans are just so so less represented than Mardu and uh, and Abzan. Uh, there was a stretch of time when Jeskai was the bee's knees, man. That's bee's true. Knees. Yeah, but it was mostly combo based, right? Sure. I mean, you Ascendancy. wanted to have Jeskai Ascendancy, and it was doing a bunch of degenerate things. And, and the funny thing is, like, both of Abzan and Mardu have black and white in them. That's mm -hmm. the central theme. So I wonder if that's the strongest pull of these two colors, like having access to the black and white card. The link that holds them together. Yeah, the, the tie that binds. The, the utter ends and the siege rhino. <laughs> well, I guess not siege rhino. I was going to say crackling doom, so it's okay. Oh, crackling. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> we were both wrong. <laughs> yes, they, they, both, they both don't have that. All righty. Pretty standard start for both these players. Kenneth, turn one, warden of the first tree. Seth Manfield, turn two, seeker of the way. Seeker of the way, a monk? A uh, human monk? I would imagine so, yeah. I, I, I can't imagine that he's dressed like that and he's not a monk. That'd be... That'd be flavor. F uh, flavor fail 101, if you ask me. I think they teach that in 102, though. That's the problem. Oh, so he's. You don't think he's there yet? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, maybe. Yeah, maybe that's true. When you cast some spells, then you know he kind of. He graduates he to does flavor. His thing, yeah. Flavor school 102. <laughs> that's that's his second year of, of flavor school. So he's, he he might not be a monk. Maybe he's just a a human soldier. I think that, I think that's accurate. Kenneth just gonna pump up his warden of the first tree here. Make it a three three. That guy's a human warrior now. Mm. This gives Seth a chance to really do something here. Kill the uh, Warden if he has a removal spell here and then get in for a million. And again, by million, I mean three. Yes. If you had a choice uh, how, you would, how you would have to die in a game of Magic, what, what, what removal spell would you prefer? What removal spell? I guess Silk Wrath. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I'm like, that's a very pleasant way to go. Well, it depends, man. What if it's like slowly binding you like a constrictor? I mean, is that better than an utter end? Or like yes, because then you're just gone. Silk Rev is like... Oh, so you just want to you just want to leave... Uh, Rashad said pacifism. What about swords to plowshares? Okay, no. <laughs> He's thinking about it. <laughs> I would not want to... I, I guess you're not technically dead with a Silk Rev, though, because you can come back. That's true. So you're I just, don't, you're I don't just actually like, know what's happening. You're basically taking a break in Silk... It's a very weird card. Ah, flavor. I, <laughs> you know, I do love magic ah, flavor. flavor. Anyway, shambling vent from Seth after the Silk Rep. That did trigger the prowess, so he did gain three. I feel like we have to make a Coke-style ad where we're both holding drinks, and the, the slogan on the bottom says, ah, flavor. Uh, I'm not going to respond to that. I'm going to... Uh, That's fine. You'll just see it when I make it then. All right, fair enough. <laughs> I don't need your permission. Find us some TCG butter. Uh, player bought water bottles. <laughs> I like butter, though. That was good. Butter, Let's go with that. Butter. Well, you were talking about butter earlier, and it was like <laughs> on the mind. Was I? Cheese curds, you know? And That's true. We were talking about the uh, the dairy. I like the land base that Kenneth has right now. He's sucking hollow prairie stream in two forests. Yeah, man. It's like... <laughs> I got everything I need, technically. My, 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 my blue sources are uh, non-basic, which I don't even need. Kenneth has a Kologons command in his... Uh, in his oh, list. this is Abzan Red. I think that's the only red card, though. Man, that's real greedy. Oh, sideboard Radiant Flames. Okay. Yeah, so Kenneth, Kenneth is actually playing an Abzan Red build. He has no red sources, though, right now. Not currently, but uh, he has, what, how many oh, in the main deck? He also has a Negate in the sideboard and a Dragon Lance Silumgar. This is like a five-color deck. Oh, and Exert Influence. Yeah, Disdainful oh Strokes. Oh, my gosh. This is like five-color Abzan. What a, what a time to be alive here. Uh, it's it's still a very Abzan aggro deck though yeah, is the thing. He's very it's very like Abzan centric. Splashing for sideboard cards and whatnot. He's basically going to get prairie streams and sunken hollows anyway, so yep. he's like, oh, I might as well cast some blue spells while I'm here. Alrighty, Anafenza on Kenneth's side. Let's see if Seth can do anything to uh, stop that. Crackling Doom would be pretty decent here. 
Man, Crackling Doom is such an impressive card. One red, and Kenneth knows he's just picking up his Warden. All right, and just a hangerback walker. So just tosses down the Nomad Outpost. Very nomadic. Doesn't even care. I was very, I was very disappointed. Uh, I was playing a an Abzan Warriors deck this past week, and I was very disappointed that Anafenza was in it. But like, she's not a warrior; she's a soldier. So I was like, why, why aren't you a warrior? <laughs> All of your Abzan friends are warriors. That's like the central theme of these of these colors. She's the leader. She doesn't need to be a warrior. She can do whatever she yeah. wants. Until she turns into a ghost. That's true. It's, a, it's called a spirit, Kenji. Yeah, well, you ghost spirit. Well, I think ghost is a little offensive. Maybe, maybe. Any, in any case, <laughs> Anafenza is the foremost getting in for four here. No friends to buff, though, unfortunately. Seth with no reasonable blocks doesn't want to trade away for hanger back. Oh, a Dramokas command is happening. Well, that hanger back. Oh, wow, get a warden of the first tree. Let's make sure that hanger back, hanger back goes to the exile zone since Anafenza. Oh, that's true. Not sure it's going to be relevant. Uh, Seth has delve spells, it is, though. It doesn't look like it. he has two murderous cuts, though. And Kologon's command can bring back, so yeah, there it goes. Yeah, it's, we figured it out. We made magic happen. Uh, this is not looking great for Seth, but I mean, you know, anything could happen, so. I'm going to crack in with his Seeker of the Way. No blocks. Just mm, two. Just take two, then. Bloodstained Mire, straight to the graveyard. I don't like the one on Warden of the First Tree because it makes me think it's on level one, but it's actually on level zero, is it not? Um, like the one makes me think it's been pumped one time to put it at three three. But it gets two counters when it becomes a, or when it becomes a three three. Uh, okay, I see what you mean. But it doesn't get counters. Oh, that's sure, the thing. Sure. You know, it just becomes a three three naturally. So Ooh. like, oh, that's very good. Yeah, Wingmate Rock a great. Uh, so Seth was like, I'm gonna bluff and make you think I have something good, but I'm just going to play Wingmate Rock. That's why I'm attacking for two. Well, if K Kenneth didn't have the mana to pump up the, the warrior anyways. All right, we see an Abzan charm in Kenneth's hand. There's a plains, nice and pretty. <laughs> what about those other lands? Are you going to make them feel inadequate? Mm, yes, because That's they're not foil. Well, for, one, of, one of the forces is, but... Landis. <laughs> but that's fair. We've had we've had land discussions all weekend, so sure. that's fine. I mean, I haven't said anything about Seth land, Seth's land because they're all whatever. <laughs> Basic. All right, and the team gets in. Uh, counter on the warden. Look at these tiny little dice. You are going to get so many counters, warden. Um. Well, I got birds. What to do? Double block is scary, though. Kenneth Double has block's a real scary. He's got an Abzan Charm and a Dramokas Command. Those are two very versatile spells. Ooh. I wouldn't even know what modes to choose on both of those. You get, like, three modes to choose from between Actually, two cards. He can just take care of both of uh, yeah, Seth's just creatures. Exile a Wingmate uh, Rock, wingmates. put counters on the other. Oh, God. That's, like, the perfect two cards. You can cast them both. Mm -hmm. I guess the question is, is Seth... Deciding whether he wants to block here, or is Kenneth deciding if he wants to use it prior to damage? Yeah, exactly. So four, five, six. And it looks like Seth said no effects. So I assume Kenneth is going to go ahead and pop something off here. Kenneth can deal 10 damage here. But if he doesn't take care of the rock, then he, Seth's going to gain some of that life back. He also yeah, has a shambling true. vent. And if he has any spell, the Seeker of the Way is also going to gain life. Correct, so. yeah. I feel like a Crackling Doom would be very good for Seth here. So four mana probably means Pump of the Warden and then Jamoka's Command. But well, he's going to have to spend two first unless the, unless the Warden is actually a 3-3. Three three. Well, four, four mana, so Pump the Warden and then use Jamoka's Command is what I mean. Oh, yeah, I see. So Pump him to, with a two mana activation yeah. and then Jamoka's Command. That's a thing you could do. Do we know if the Warden is on level zero or level one? We'll find out momentarily here. I just want to see what kind of uh, conventions they're using for the die. Okay, so he's putting it on level two, it looks like. Oh, so it was already. That's why, yeah, I thought okay. it was a 3-3. Three, three. And now he's going to fight with lifelink. Nice. Yeah, that's a lot of life. 
Wait, is he fighting with the Anafenza or? Hmm. I would definitely fought with the Lifelinker. It does gain Lifelink, right, on the second Yeah, mode? it gains yeah. Lifelink and Trample. So it definitely has, like, two counters on it, so it's a 5-5. Five five. Yeah, yeah, and it looks like Kenneth did gain the life. So he did fight with the f Warden onto the Wingmate Rock, which did get exiled. Did he gain 10, though? He would have gained 5 from the attack itself, and then 5 from the fight. Oh, sure, and an additional, yeah. So I, right. don't, I don't think, I think he just gained 5 from the attack. I would, yeah, I think I think he just missed the 5 there from the life. Okay, yeah, that's very from possible. The, from the fighting, which I w seems very relevant to me. Uh, the blocks had already been, you know, no blocks had d been declared. Rashad asked if he died to a blocker. And, uh, yeah, we think he, he cast a Rook's Command post-block. So. I mean, in any case, Kenneth is in a great position here. Yeah, it doesn't, right, it doesn't change that fact. Ooh, Gideon. And Seth was probably like, fight with Anafenza? Okay. Because <laughs> there, th there was definitely a bit of confirmation there, so yeah. that would make sense. I think we're just making a knight ally. Sure. An ally, if you will. And remember, this uh, Seeker of the Way is going to get in for three lifelink. Put Seth up to seven, I believe. Mm -hmm. But a 5-5 five five Warden with Trample and the opponent having an Abzan Charm in their hand. Well, the thing is, like, he can, Kenneth can now tap six mana and make it, give it five counters. Uh, that's also... <laughs> that's, that makes it a 10-10. And then if he attacks with an Afenza, that makes it an 11-11. So I can't imagine, unless Seth has Murderous Cut. Oh, that would be amazing. Does Seth even have cards in hand? He has, he has at least one card in hand. What if he's got a Murderous Cut? What if this is Infinite Obliteration all over again? He, do, he does have two Murderous Cut in main deck. And he's got exactly four cards. Yes. I'm getting real excited. What's going to happen? Because otherwise, this, is a, this could be a 10-10. All right. Go to blocks. We'll see what uh, Seth has lined up here. Yeah, double block. Oh, just a block block. Yeah, sure. So if you're Kenneth, you could actually just pass priority here. You, you don't need to get greedy. Yeah, you don't die. Greedy. I mean, Abzam Charm can be used to exile Gideon should it uh, turn into a creature. I don't think it's I don't think it's uh, murderous cut unfortunately because Seth is blocking in such a way that he would only take six from the warden of the first tree. Sure. Which keeps him alive. All right, and Kenneth is going to go for it. Oh, Seth! Oh, <laughs> there's a murderous cut. <laughs> We're going to need the second dice. Oh, he's looking! He keeps looking. I I oh man! Oh dang it! No, it's definitely not. All right, and Seth is just going to pick him up here, oh I guess. Oh, man, that would have been so exciting. It would have been the perfect situation. He's got the one mana, four cards in the graveyard. Man. Uh, Warden of the First Tree doing a very good uh, figure of destiny impression. Yeah, definitely. Remember that card? Definitely. Yeah. It's a nice uh, throwback to that, I think. Figure of destiny was very impressive. Yep. Man, 4-4 four, four for, like, three mana. Ugh. It goes 2-2, two, 4-4, two, four, four, and then, like, a 8-8. Eight, eight. And here's Adam Yurchek on the left, play also playing an Abzan deck, and Josh McLean, uh, the same rally deck that we saw last round, uh, piloted by John Stern. So we're seeing this deck do very well. Josh McLean is currently undefeated right now at 10-0, and I believe he's the only undefeated player Correct. in the event right yeah. now. And with, what, 12 rounds of Swiss? He might... He's pretty close to locked to... I, can, I would imagine yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I, think you, I think X3s are going to make top eight. Okay, so... Josh looking pretty good. Adam, I mean, 9 and 1, still looking very good as well. Yes. And of course, we've seen both these players multiple times throughout the tournament, but they're, they're doing so well. Well, there's 12 rounds, and even if Adam loses his last two, uh, he'd still be 9-3. Sure, probably with pretty and good breaks. And he's probably pretty much a lock for top 8 as well. So I feel like these two players are doing quite well, and this is only game 1, so Adam could still even just win this one, so... Mm -hmm. No, uh, no way to tell how these things are going to break, but I mean, both these players are in very solid position right now. All right, quite a few things happening on that turn. Josh McLean murders, cutting the Anna Fenza, bashing in for three with the Catacomb Sifter and Bill Scion. What what manifest? What morph creatures are in this deck? 
in John. Is it Grim Harrow Specs, perhaps? Yep, I think that's the only morph creature that the uh, Rally deck plays. Interesting. What's the benefit of playing it face down versus oh, face up in this matchup? Uh, gets around ultimate price and uh, Abzan Charm, I, I okay. would guess. Yeah, I can see that. That makes sense. Adam could always Abzan Charm, exile the Grim Harrow Specs, and uh, if he does have ultimate price, it's a way to block, yep. or a way to, way to survive, rather. And Silkrap would already hit it no matter what. Very relevant, though. Like, uh, it might be a play that most players wouldn't make because it's, it's going to cost you the same to morph it or to flip it up or oh. to just cast it up. Also, he doesn't have a second black, I just realized. <laughs> so he murderous cut and then... He just he had to he play just face did, Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Less strategic, but uh, ultimately necessary. Don't worry, chat. I caught it. I caught it. All right, second Catacomb Sifter. Adam's already on eight life. Generally, this is not the beatdown or you know the, the game plan for the the rally deck, but hey, I mean two two threes and and one ones. I mean <laughs> I, we saw it the other day. Like he had five power on board, and he sure the opponent had no creatures, and you just attack for five every turn. It only takes four turns. You wouldn't imagine a two three very good versus a deck with many three threes and four fours and four fives. Yes, and, but uh, yeah, you know, I like Adam flipping up Den Protector and replaying the Anafenza that he gets back. That's pretty solid. Anna Fenza is also just brutal in this matchup yeah. against Josh. Like, uh, being able to exile the creatures that he sacrifices or uh, gets rid of is just just fantastic. That's exactly what you want to be doing. And generally, the rally decks are pretty blank to cards like that uh, Yeah, game one. John Stern was actually saying that, like, uh, oh, the double murderous cut, jeez. Oh, so this must be side. This is not game one, because there are four murderous cuts in uh, McLean's sideboard. So this is, this is at least game two. Interesting. I wonder who won game one, then. Looks like some trading's going on. Damage is going through a scry. Yeah, I was talking to John Stern earlier, and he was like, "We just wish we put the uh, the murderous or the the offenses in our in, in our deck for the mirror match mm -hmm. because it's very hard to beat." Looks like they're keeping or continuing to shuffle. So I guess they're going to a game three. So we're going to check back with Seth Manfield and Kenneth Cordell on the back table here, and uh, good starts for both these players: a Hangerback Walker and a Warden of the first tree. Of course. The one thing that Kenneth is capable of doing here is Dramoke is commanding and killing the hangerback while putting a counter on the warden, which mm -hmm. is not nothing. Looks like he's just going to bash in and, and probably pump. Yeah, warden is so nice super early, just the threat of activation, getting you in for some points of damage, and looks like he's going to go ahead and do it here if he's using the fetch land. Get a basic planes, I presume. And then turns on all of his battle lands, battle for Zendikar lands. Dual lands, whatever you want to call them. The pretty planes at that. The that is a pretty plane. Yes. Look at that foily beauty. I love me some uh, pretty planes. <laughs> that's is that your that should be your catchphrase. Well, I was gonna. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we'll leave it at that. Yeah, we'll just leave it at pretty planes. All right, one of the first tree, becoming a three three. Casting turn to Seth. Let's see what he can do here. Oh, is Seth missing a land drop? This always happens. I think he has some more lands in his hand. He's just going to cast a transgress. Transgress pre, pre land. That seems fine. It's also very good because it lets you choose what you want to play next turn based on what they're going to do. And uh, this is an interesting hand. I don't know how to. Like, he doesn't have the mana for Gideon here. Well, he has the double den protector with the windswept teeth in the graveyard, so. He can true. easily get back some uh, some But that lands. takes a little bit of work. Like, you're going to have to play Den Protector next turn, flip it the turn after that, play a land, turn after that, play Gideon. So it's going to take it three turns for that, that whole that whole cycle to get get going. Sure. But, I mean, he could just draw an untapped land off the top. He'll never, that the would never happen. You're being ridiculous right now. He might only have three lands in his deck. That, I, I, I mean, if, if he does, it's a perfect. He's perfect. He's drawn each one. <laughs> Just the murderous cut for a good measure. It's no, just all, yeah, he's like, I can never cast yeah. this, but no one knows. Cut or Gideon? What is he more scared of? And the good thing is it's going to get exiled, so he can't get it back with Den Protector. And obviously the Den Protectors, despite have the fact that they most of the time cost three mana, 
cannot be chosen with a transgressed of mine, neither can a warden. So Seth chooses Gideon. Planeswalker down. Kind of doesn't have any black mana right now anyways, but... All right, Shambling Vent, and a crack in for one from the hangar back. So Seth did have the mana, thank goodness. We get to get to see a decent game here with a, uh, both players having lands. It was a canopy vista we were expecting. We'll see about that good game. I hope we do. Warden cracks in for three, putting Seth with 14. Another oh. Warden. Looks like he's just going to go with the... Oh, he's going to go... Insta-pump. Okay. Yeah, it's best not to wait, because Seth has cards like Fiery Impulse or Wild Flash or what have mm -hmm. you, so it's, you don't want to like leave the guy open. When, when Seth is tapped out, you just make it a 3-3, three -three, you know? Similarly, we see players using hanger, hanger back immediately on their main phases. All right, so it looks like a Wooded Foothills for Seth. Going to get a Mountain number two. Uh, could we see a P and Kieran Nalar? That requires double red. Also requires four manas. And you are correct. Nailed it. Bingo, bango, bongo. I don't want to leave the Congo. <laughs> I refuse to go. Well done, well done. Nice. I'm no stranger. You know it's pretty good with P and Kieran Nalar? Tell me. Hanger back walker. That's true. I can sacrifice it, I can make thopters, I can do anything. Granted, you do need quite a bit of mana, but eh. Well, he could just actually pump it next turn, sure. sack it to kill something, yeah. and, uh, well, you know. Pump and chuck. <laughs> yes. Pump and chuck. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what the product you were selling on your infomercial, <laughs> the pump and chuck. Uh, There's got to be free. a better way. It's BOGO, man. If only if I act now, though, right? No. It's, it's always. Oh, it's always. That's just an industry trick. But the pump and chuck is always good. Yeah, you'll always need two. Keep one in your bathroom. Keep one in your car. <laughs> On the go. We'll see what uh, <laughs> Seth wants to do here. <laughs> Rashad just giving us glares. <laughs> it's, so, it's so hilarious. Not even glares. He's uh, just not shaking his head. He just has no emotion on his face whatsoever. All right. Double block on one of them. Looks like uh, Kenneth is actually going to pump the other one. He wants that lifelink. Life. Yeah. Man, Seth is like... That was an interesting trade. I guess you wanted to start getting these Wardens off the board, though. Sure. And Seth still has three power in the air right now. All right. Seth getting in with his Thopter tokens. That additional one he got from that hanger back last turn. Oh, oh yeah. it all makes sense now. I want oh. my hanger back, hanger back. <laughs> Uh, that would I, I'm no stranger to that one either. That has mm -hmm. definitely been uh, uttered by myself. And I think Craig Wesco <laughs> as well. I don't know if... Uh, oh, it looks like he has another land. So Kenneth has at least his fifth land. Oh, doesn't Wingmate Rock always feel so oppressive? It always is oppressive. Especially when you have nine power in the air after playing one. No, Kenneth is still at 18, but <laughs> with three Thopter tokens, you know. It's, it's real obnoxious, actually. The Raid Trigger. They're hard to deal with. And they still, it, it adds up fast. Mm -hmm. And we have, uh, he does have his black source now. He can get a Sunken Hollow or a Smoldering Marsh or, you know, whatever whatever helps him out the most. Sure. And Seth knows that he has that uh, murderous cut in his hand in addition to the double uh, Den Protector. Now we might, we might just see murderous cut, Den Protector, murderous, you know, lots of... Uh, so we want a Smoldering Marsh. Oh, look at that Expedition Smoldering Marsh. I'm looking at it. Someone's fancy. I'm looking at it. Now what? Well, that's all. Oh. You can stop now. Oh, okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure you did it. All right. Three cards in the graveyard. So, you know, we can see, we can see a murderous cut here plus a uh, face down den protector. That's not awful. It's not great. Well, there's a face down den protector, and he looks like he is keeping murderous cut mana alive and well. Uh, the unfortunate part is by doing, well, I guess you can get back murderous cut, so. Yeah. I was like, the unfortunate part is he's going to have to delve away all his cards. That's what I'm saying. He gets to do the, the old chain. The, the murderous cut, dead protector shuffle? Yeah. Oh, classic. Granted, each time his uh, graveyard gets a little bit smaller. Oh, he's just going to do it right now. He's like, no. So it looks like Seth is in his combat step, perhaps? Yeah, he didn't want to let the rage trigger happen. Yeah, for obvious reasons. Well, the attack trigger, you mean. Oh, sorry. Right. Yeah, it's like the, the raid trigger oh, already he happens. Still, yeah, yeah, he can still raid. He's still got four guys. He didn't want no life to be gained, which would have been five life. That's a pretty sizable amount. Only one more land needed for uh, Kenneth to 
to go upstairs, boom tomb, with the boom tomb. I don't know. I, I tried to rhyme, it didn't sound good. With the warden of the first tree. I, I liked boom tomb. <laughs> that was fantastic. I was like, what is that from? Well, you know, maybe it makes sense. Boom, and then, you know, send Seth to the tomb. Boom tomb. Yeah, all right. That's, uh, oh, right. okay. Well, that's pretty good. See, my raid comment made sense now. <laughs> but it didn't make sense that Kenneth was trying to stop raid because <laughs> that did not work at all. <laughs> no boom tomb, good sir. All right, well, double wingmate rock from Seth Manfield, back to back turns. Wow. I hear that's good. Well, that's quite good. I hear three, three, four flyers is pretty solid. Yeah, Absin doesn't have a great way to deal with things like this. You don't think uh, <laughs> Kenneth, Kenneth has the planar outburst right now? Uh, not, not in this one. No. You're gonna lean on no there. He's, the, he's the aggro deck. I do want to see, man. I wish he had brought in exert influence. Oh, just steal one. Would that even do enough though? You well, just steal one. Not, not that the second one's being played. No, but stealing uh, one. Yeah, stealing the first one would yeah, be fine. Yeah, great. Then you can block his stoppers all day. You, you, you stop the, the aerial beats. Yeah, and the token just jumps or the bounces off the other one. But he doesn't have any blue sources, and you know. That's because he went with the smoldering marsh instead of the sunken hollow. Yeah. And he probably doesn't have Exert Influence <laughs> in his hand, at least. We know he has it in the sideboard. He's got two copies of that bad boy. All right, what do we got here? Another Murderous Cut, potentially? Yeah, he's like, no no life gains. But, you know, Kenneth, that's still nine points this in the is, air, yeah. buddy. Oy. He's like Crackling Doom you. GG. Oh, oh Self-Inflicted self wound, wound you. The Shrug, and they're going to go to a game three. <laughs> I don't even care what you sacrifice. It, this will just kill you. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so apparently Adam Yurchek and uh, Josh McLean, they've um, technically agreed. Uh, Josh, Josh conceded to, to Adam just because uh, Josh is literally a lock for the top eight mm -hmm. at this point. And uh, now Adam is as well. I, I, I assume at ten yep. one. And yeah, they're just playing. They're still playing it out because good sportsmanship. So, um, well, we can st still watch that game in progress and see what happens here. See how this matchup <laughs> might have shaken out. But yeah, it looks like Adam Yurchik and Josh McLean are uh, the first ones we're aware of that are locked for top eight here. So that's real sweet. Those are two amazing players, and I'm glad to see them both in the top eight this weekend. That's fantastic. Jumping into the game, looks like they're pretty well progressed already. Uh, Zulaport Cutthroat eating an ultimate price. Draining Adam Yurchik, putting him to a nine. Josh getting a scry trigger there. It's also these matches have seemed like they were in Josh's favor from what we saw. I think so. That's Anafenza. Anafenza's a good one. Remember Rest in Peace? That was I a good do remember card. Rest in Peace. It was like Leyline of the Void, except it's like, well, listen, we'll do that same thing, but let's get rid of all the old stuff too. <laughs> It was like a Tormod's Crypt Deluxe. Deluxe. White always gets the best sideboard options. All right. Well, Adam's going to make a game of this. And offends it into Wingmate Rock. So, how do you feel about Wingmate Rock this weekend? It's a good card. Um, I mean, it's great against most decks. <laughs> it's great against, against decks that you're trying to uh, reduce the opponent from 20 to 0. And decks that have removal spells. Correct. <laughs> or decks that have creatures. It's just so good. The four toughness is huge. The two flyers are huge. The life gain is generally pretty relevant. I remember when uh, you can cast Wingmate Rock and it would slip under Elspeth. Yes. At three toughness. Yes. Or three power, rather. Yeah, this card's very good. They don't make them like they used to. Five mana used to get you a lot less back in the day. All right, second Catacomb Sifter there for Josh. Going to get another Eldrazi Scion token. Two Catacomb Sifters versus two birds. Oh, oh, well, he's probably bouncing the token here, I imagine. Maybe sack that, sack that spawn, bounce the token, get a scry on. Sure. No scry? You got a double scryed. That was two scries. Scry on off the does scion. He, does <laughs> oh, man. That, that joke almost had me cry <laughs> on. Uh. I'd be Lion if I didn't think uh, Adam was just doing pretty well here. Well, that, that Wingmate Rock sure is fly on. And that Anna is die on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Right, double block of the Catacomb Sifters onto the Anna But Ooh, Adam, wow. Siege Ryan, no. With another Anna and a Siege Rhino. And he's going to go ahead and extend the hand. That was 
So did Josh. Oh, so Adam won the match. Adam naturally won the match yep, then. Yep. So everything worked out. Everybody wins, except for Josh McClain. But he already won because he's in the top eight now. And perfect timing, actually, if we go back to other match. They're right on their turn once. Yeah, this, is, this has worked out. This, this round has worked out very well for us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I appreciate it, even though they, uh, like, a player conceded or they draw or whatever. Like, I always appreciate when they play it out for the cover for the sake of coverage. Yeah. Like, it's just very, uh, it's good. It's, it's good sportsmanship. Yeah, I mean, why not? They get practice if they're going to play each other in the top. Exactly. Well, so. And, like, a, a lot of times when you're, like, uh, a player of that level, like, there's a lot of camaraderie between the two players. So they're, you know, you just play to play. I don't, I don't know about being a player on that level, though, so I don't. I, I've heard things. Okay. <laughs> I, ca I can understand, but I can't comprehend. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes, that makes, okay. makes total sense. All right. Kenneth again with just this, these wardens have been going the distance. They've been going for speed. Uh, yes, yes, they have. This one, however, is all alone. It is. In his time of need. <laughs> it is currently all alone. All right, secret of the way for Seth Manfield. We saw this almost the same exact start, I think, in their game one. Where yeah, uh, the warden versus the secret of yeah. the way. Monk versus human warrior. Exactly. I like that when you activate the warden and like uh, Kithkin, uh, figure of destiny, like they e each activation gains like a new creature type. Mm -hmm. First one's like human warrior, then it's human warrior spirit, then it's human warrior spirit legend gorilla. <laughs> and you're like, well, wait, why is it slow down? You don't need this many jobs. Now the pretty much the perfect cur uh, curve here for Kenneth. Yeah, the the one drop warden, turn two activate, turn three anafenza. Yeah, man, warden. Doing its best watchful fit impression here. Uh, if Seth has a Crackling Doom, which it looks like he might, this is a, actually a great turn for Seth, too. Yep. Crackling Doom, you take two, I gain three. So he would take five, maybe 14, 14, 16 in Seth's favor, which evens up the game <laughs> pretty solidly. Uh, people commentating how our, our pun game is not anywhere close to uh, LSVs. Man, that's unfortunate. Yeah. I feel like there's no way that's accurate. I have no comments on that. Okay. <laughs> Is that not in and of itself a comment? I, I, I Crackling Doom was the play. <laughs> Secret of the way. Guess, getting in for three, going to gain six. I mean, I just felt like I predicted here. it. I didn't, need, uh, I didn't need confirmation. Sure, sure. All right. Wooded Foothills for Kenneth. Now, these players, uh, you said X3 might potentially make it? Well, they were t there was talks that X3 is uh, in contention for top eight. Okay. Yes. So I imagine there's going to be several high X3s that, that make the cut. So maybe not these guys since they've already got their third loss by whatever, round 10. But uh, Well, I mean... There's still a shot. No, they absolutely I play it out. I definitely want to keep uh, keep the Seth dream alive. Sure. And wow, he is just going to level yeah, up the Warden again. Which, I mean, that's great, but like it, it goes from a 3-3 to a 3-3, so you're not really pulling like that much that much, you're not pulling any more damage like it doesn't increase your board presence you just get the lifelink benefit interesting well, yeah and if Seth has any removal here he's just gonna completely wreck Kenneth Kenneth has does Kenneth have siege rhinos we haven't seen a single siege rhino in these games yeah there's four he has the four damage. siege rhinos just wanted to make sure he also has two nisses he has three wingmate rocks of his own but we haven't seen okay. a lot of these creatures I mean, we've seen mostly like murderous cuts, den protectors, wardens, and and offenses. Yep. I feel like that's the concentration of spells that he's been he's been playing. I think if Seth has a removal spell here for the warden, you just get it out of the yeah. way. Send that dude packing, and then you get to swing back for three. The the return three lifelink to match Kenneth's. That's also very good. It isn't bad, that's for sure. Now remember, warden has trample, so. Yeah, I would chump block with the token and take one for Gideon. All right, Seeker's going to get in for three here. Yeah, that life link, man. That's already getting, what, six life? Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely relevant. Yeah, because the, 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 one, the, the one shot with Crackling Doom and one shot with Gideon, mm -hmm. so. Six life is not nothing. I think, I think Kenneth has four lands and an Abzan charm in his hand. Absent Trump's not great here, but it can pump the Warden to make, deal a little extra damage, makes him a 5-5, five five, which puts Gideon to 1. And if Seth doesn't block, it just kills Gideon, which yeah. is probably what Kenneth wants. Plus, if Kenneth untaps and Seth doesn't have a removal spell for this one Warden, it gets huge. Okay. Uh, Kenneth is opting not to use the... Uh, Interesting. But, so... Actually, I don't, does that make sense? Because now, now Seth is probably... 
a little bit uh, tempted to plus the Gideon. Uh, I'm not actually sure. We'll, we'll see what uh, the game plan here is for Kenneth. He might want maybe. to draw cards. I was going to say, maybe Kenneth is just going to let Gideon attack and then exile it with Abzan Charm, but if you're going to do that, you just wouldn't attack Gideon, right? Unless you want to prevent him from making an emblem, I guess. Well, you would just kill Gideon with the uh, Abzan Charm, any, you know, by Yeah, pumping. I guess you're doing yeah. it, and, and you get the two counters yeah, yeah. out of it, which doesn't, yeah, that doesn't really make sense. Oh, that's very good for Seth. It pumps the, the Seeker of the Way, and he draws three cards. And the life loss is basically negligible because you're just going to gain it back from sure. Seeker of the Way. Unless Kenneth kills Seeker of the Way, but that doesn't seem as good as just getting rid of a Gideon. Well, Kenneth knows that he's gonna, he already has the mana to pump up Warden next turn. My concern is that Kenneth is going to be able to make Warden huge next turn, like, yeah, like you said. Yeah. Which makes him an 10-10 if he uses Abzan Charm, 8-8 if he doesn't. With lifelink, that's <laughs> very large, sir. That's that's, co that's disconcerting. Like I, I would hope Seth has an answer somewhere. Maybe like a, a black land and a murderous cut or something. Well, he did just draw three cards. He hasn't played a land yet, so we'll see what he's got going on here. He does have a lot of lands that would come into play tapped here, including Nomad Outpost and Shambling Vent. So it's got to be something that comes into play untapped. Silk Rep still gets rid of Warden of the first tree too. Yes, it does. Which is very sweet. Abzan Charm cannot get rid of a Silk Wrap either. It's not his Remokus Command. Whoa, that's a... So I think he's definitely going to Abzan Charm something here. I don't think he wants to take 10. Yep. See, this is just really yeah. awkward now to me. Because I feel like you could have done the same thing last turn and also had two extra counters yeah, on your, warden your, your Abzan. Your, your Warden. Mm. On your Abzan. Put him on your Abzan. Slightly awkward, but uh, we'll see what Kenneth can do from this. Mm -hmm. I mean, he has nothing but lands in hand, so I assume the Warden is just going to go large. Okay. Oh, oh. Something's happening. I'll just hang her back, Walker. If that was a Silk Wrap, <laughs> I would have been real excited. Uh, another Warden. Yeah, he's just going big. Yeah, and Seth is tapped out. I think your safest play is just an attack for eight. With lifelink and trample. Yep, he's doing it. Right. Well, it's a big life swing. It's but eight, uh, yeah, it's a 16-point life swing. It's not unre It's not reasonable in any in any capacity. That so is a sizable difference. Seth has already used one Crackling Doom. He has three left because he's four main deck. There's a Ruinous Path, an Utter End, two Murderous Cuts, and two Silk Wrap. A lot of answers potentially he here Yeah, Seth. he definitely has a lot of answers. He might have even needed to just untap. Like, any Crackling Doom just kills this guy. Four mana? Oh, utter end's and there's perfect. the utter end. Yeah, that's great. If he had any of the two rem two mana removal spells, he would have used it last turn. Um, Attack him back down to five. Or the gains, cut. gains three, and then he can still pump hanger back walker. Yeah, th this game looks very very much in Seth's favor right now, and uh, with Kenneth only having a warden, like warden's gonna actually be an eight eight next turn, but Seth still gets a draw step. He's gonna deal a lot of damage with his creatures. Great draw by Kenneth, though. See Rhino. Yep. Is that better than just playing Warden, pumping it to a 3-3 three, three this turn, and then pumping it to an 8-8 eight, eight next turn? It goes a little bit wider, and it gives you some more resistance. The Siege Rhino is going to be able to block Seeker the way almost assuredly. Yeah. Um, and he can, you know, he can still pump the Warden to a 3-3 three, three after playing a land. Standard cards are just so powerful. You have to respect, like, it's, it's gotten to a point where, like, you have to respect each card that your opponent could have. Alrighty, Polluted Delta. Kenneth's gonna find a swamp there. Not a pretty swamp. It's it's just a basic swamp. So basic. So basic. The plainest of the plain. The no, plainest a, of the swamps. It's a swamp, Frank, not a plain. Uh. <laughs> if that was if that was me, that was that was almost spot on. Well, I've been practicing all weekend. Oh. I mean, we go. We we've been getting back to our rooms at like nine or ten. So sure. I, I mean, I spent at least three hours last night trying to get the voice down. So fair enough. <laughs> All right, looks like Siege Rhino and Warden pump up once. The game plan from Kenneth, and as usual, correctly does it immediately. You okay. want to avoid like Dramoka's command type nonsense. Well, I don't think Seth's gonna have a Dramoka's command. Oh right, right. <laughs> Kenneth would have wild it. Wild slash, wild slash. <laughs> What can Seth pull together here? He is up a lot of cards from that. Uh, the painful truth is yep. no joke, man. Yep. 
I love the uh, the Seeker of the Way into Painful Truths because it just negates the life loss. Mm -hmm. Did Seth just pass? Shambling Vents pass. Ooh. That's Shambling Vent. Vents pass. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you every time. All right. What did uh, this is interesting? What did Kenneth draw? Just another land. See, it's interesting because Seth probably doesn't want to use a removal spell on the Siege Rhino because he's got to deal with the, the Warden of the first tree in like two turns. Correct. So he might just be passing in order to make sure he saves his removal spell for the Warden. Oh, something's happening. Oh, just, just level up. Okay. Yeah, I like both player, players passing here. Man. It's weird. Warden of the first tree gives you a lot of inevitability with that plus five, plus five if you don't have a removal spell. Yeah. But on the same hand, he's very susceptible to a lot of things. Murderous Cut, Ultimate Price, Silk Wrap. Oh, but it, Seth doesn't draw him, you know? Yeah, so... <laughs> It's a uh, Warden of the First Tree is a very, very glass cannony type card. Like, it's very powerful, but it can be broken easily. My uncle was a Warden of the First Tree. I don't believe you. It's unfortunate. <laughs> Good, I just <laughs> nipped that in the bud. <laughs> oh man. Okay. <laughs> it appears you are wise to my tricks, Sav. Looks like one of the knights is going to get in here. Which one? The the one on top. That's the only one that is. Yep, the Gideon Knight. You so ever look at a creature on a card and you're like, why is this only this power and toughness? Um, yes. I okay. Guess. You're not sure though. Oh. Like I would look at that knight and I'm like, you got a horse and a sword. Why are you only a tutu? Uh, humans aren't generally very powerful. No, that's unfortunate. Wingmate Rock. Oh yes. That's a nice one. So he was willing to throw away his tutu just to get the trigger. <laughs> and it Kenneth took it. He's like, I'm not, I ain't trying to deal with any of those shenanigans. All right. End of turn pump up. We're going to see a very large war. If, if Kenneth can draw a removal spell here. Don't will it. Don't don't make it happen. What, what, what was it? It's a, it's, a it's a spell. It's a white thing. Uh, okay, what is he having his deck list? He's flashing too quickly. Uh, Could be a Gideon himself. But oh, it might be a sideboard surge of righteousness. That doesn't do anything right now. No, it's a, in fact, I don't even know why he would. So Kenneth only has eight lands, so he can only play something that costs two or less if he wants to put that warden of the first tree in beast mode. Yo, Kenneth, flash us your hand real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that white card. Oh, it is a Surge of Righteousness. Interesting. All right. Hanger back walker getting a little bit bigger. Seth's like, I don't even play black or red creatures. Not today. Not today. Actually, the only... And what do we say to death? <laughs> it's only P and Kieran Nalar. That's the only red or black creature. I think that's the only creature. red or black creature. <laughs> Interesting. Oh. Do you think he put him on, like, Butcher of the Horde? I... P and Kieran Nalar is a real interesting one, too, because you rarely attack yeah. with it. And you can always just... Well, you can't sacrifice it, I guess. But he's already gotten value out of it at that point. You made two dudes. I mean, maybe he took out something that I mean, was worse than Kenneth Surge. might have just drawn a blank there. I don't think there's anything in his main no, deck worse than Surge. All his cards are very good. That's the thing about Abzan, though. Like, all your cards are in independently strong. Like, exert influence there would have been nutters. Steal your wingmate rock, like we had mentioned earlier. Seth threw a removal spell? I feel like that's... Reasonable considering how bold he is, like knowing that Kenneth has the ability to make an 8 8. Then again, K Seth could just triple block the uh, Warden, and with Hangerback being a 5 5, like he's gonna get 5 1 1s, mm -hmm. and Warden would die. Well, it would die. I what mean, are you gonna say? Seth is making this deck because he had, remember, he had the same board presence the turn before without the Wingmate Rock, so he might as well get in, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, he also has two Shambling Vents, which both can be activated, so sure. he definitely has enough power to put in front of that Warden of the First Tree. So we're thinking about stuff in response to the Warden here. Oh, old Crackly. No, he's... I, I don't think he's actually... I think he's letting it respond, right? Well, this is... Or letting it resolve, rather. This is awkward. Yeah, they're probably asking you, Judge. Like, I think Seth wanted, had the intent to make the, let the uh, Warden resolve. Yeah, yeah. Almost certainly. Judge! Judge! 
Good. Good. I just heard them both say judge at the same time. Man, it was like a it was it was very surreal because I'm watching them and then I heard it in the background. I mean, it's like fr from our point of view, it looked like he was in response. Oh, he just walked up. Apparently, he won his last round. He, he, I wonder if he's a lock for the top eight right now. Do you think you're a lock for the top eight? He said no. I, I think he's, I believe Ali Antrazi is X3 right now. X3, is that your record? Okay, so Ali is X3 right now. Uh, we have Seth and Kenneth uh, yeah, yeah. trying to figure out what the Crackling Doom situation is. I, I believe this, it's a discrepancy with Seth wanted to kill the Warden yeah, in the first yeah. three. Um, I, I mean, rule by intent here just seems like you just say no, that was obviously your intention. You tapped your mana. I, I, if I was Seth, I'd be like, I let, let the Warden resolve. Kill it. I mean, the, the game is still going to be very, very close, even if the warden is the one that survives here. Yeah. Oh, I think I think Seth is still fine if the warden if the warden survives. But like, I think Kenneth's in much worse shape if the warden dies. Like, ha just having a four-five here with no life link against Seth's uh, threatening a five-five. Sure. <laughs> it's just, I mean, that, and the five-five being a hanger back walker, like that's puts ver Seth in a very favorable favorable position. But technically, there's no reason he shouldn't be able to just like wait until the warden resolves then. Play Crackling Doom. Yeah. I get just. We'll have to see what the ruling on the field and is eventually. There's actually. Time in the round has been called. So obviously, these guys being in the future match area, they do have an extension. So we're not sure how much time they have left in their round. Uh, this judge call is also going to give them an, an, an additional extension, depending on how long it takes. So they still have a few minutes uh, to finish this match. And they're, this is game three, so I can't imagine it's going to go on too much longer. Mm -hmm. Plus, they have five additional turns. So I definitely imagine this game will come to a natural conclusion. Yeah, and this is only round four of five uh, as far as Swiss rounds go today. So, Correct. So, yeah, next round's the last round before the cut to the top eight, uh, which we'll be broadcasting you live. And it should be very sweet. I'm excited about it. And as we said earlier, we already have Adam Yurchek and uh, Josh McLean yep. confirmed in the yep. top eight. If you're watching their match previously, the old four-color rally versus another Abzan. Yeah, and they still played it out on camera, which was sweet. Uh, very appreciative of that. I don't know. What do you think the top eight's going to be looking like? We know Abzan and four-color rally for sure. Okay, right. so we're going to cut back to... Uh, how you doing, guys? I'm Frank Lepore. I'm here with Kenji Gashir again. We are uh, just waiting on the judge call from that match. Uh, it, we're not really sure what's going on. Uh, it it looks like there's like, some, yeah. Yeah, it seems like there's a discrepancy with the um, with when the timing of the Crackling Doom for Seth Manfield. I believe his opponent thought he was responding to the activation of Warden of the First mm -hmm. Tree, but it seems like it was actually uh, letting let it resolve then play Crackling Doom to get rid of the Warden of the First Tree when it was an 8-8. Uh, then also, uh, Kenneth would also take two at that point, which puts me even worse. Like, it seems like Seth is in a, a pretty good pretty good lead, but if Kenneth's able to keep his 8-8, it gives him a little more of a chance. Um, so we're not, not exactly sure. It was just an announcement of timing issue. Yeah, it was know, just like, well... Because uh, clearly he wants to kill the, the, the yeah, Warden. Yeah, and Kenneth, clearly it seems like Kenneth thought he was responding yeah. to it. And Seth is like, well, why would I want to do that? <laughs> That's just crazy. I'll just kill the 8-8. With case. lifelink and trample, so we'll come back as soon as uh, that that appeal is finished. Um, but so yeah, one more round after this, and then the top eight is going to be announced. So we'll uh, make sure to keep you guys apprised of that and who's going to be sitting pretty in there. And uh, winner's going to go home with twelve thousand dollars. I thought I thought we agreed yesterday that we were taking some. Well, we have to like we still I, we want to present it as twelve. Gotcha, $1, gotcha. So. Okay. Yeah, Kenji and I are taking about sixty percent of it. <laughs> um, unbeknownst to the players, I haven't mentioned anything yet, so. So it goes. So that's, it goes. That's the price of coverage, though. You know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta make out with some money if you can. Make out with some money. All right. <laughs> that's that's uh, what they, that's how they say in the biz. That's definitely a thing. Um, um, yeah. So, Seth deck, the uh, the Marty deck. It's it hasn't seen a lot of play in events recently, but I think it's actually pretty well positioned in this format. I don't know. I think, I think. I'm most of the time, I'd rather just be playing Abzan than... Really? Yeah, the, the red adds 
How dare some you? Some stuff, like we had mentioned Crackling Doom earlier, but it just feels like the green cards are bigger and better. Do you think so? I think so. Interesting. You don't like P and Kieran Alar? It's double red. It's fine. It does some work with Hanger Backwalker, but we've seen Abs and right. a lot doing a lot Coligans more work. Command. That card's very well positioned, sure, but you know, you even can get, you can get back a Wingmate Rock or a, a Hanger Backwalker. Kenneth has that card in his deck too. That's true. Abzan. Okay, that's true. He does. Right? Yeah, Kenneth is more of a five color deck. He does have exert influence in the sideboard. Uh, we also see cards like Dragonlord Silumgar and Negate in the sideboard, which is interesting. Um, so yeah, it's more of a five color Abzan deck than just a regular Abzan mm -hmm. aggro deck. Um, we, some, sometimes you're calling it Abzan red if it has red, or Abzan blue if it has blue, but this has both red and blue. And he does have the one Kolagon's command in the main deck, interestingly enough. I don't think we've seen any haven't of these sideboard draw. cards. Yeah. yeah, haven't seen any of the sideboard cards except for Surge of Righteousness, <laughs> which actually wasn't that great against Seth. Like, the card doesn't make him sacrifice anything except for maybe P and Kieran Nalar. The, the card is actually just awful in the matchup. It's kind of funny that it, it was brought in. I mean, I, I, like, you see Mardu. Right, right yeah. So you, you see red, black, and maybe white like and Butcher of the Horde or maybe... Uh, there's also been a lot of match a lot of Mardu decks this weekend that have had Abbot of Carol Keep, but Seth doesn't have Abbots. He, his, his only creatures are four Seeker of the Way, uh, four Hangerback Walker, three P and Kieran Nalar, and two Wingmate Rocks. So, you know, the only card you're actually going to be able to Surge of Righteousness is a P and Kieran Nalar, and you're never really attacking with that guy anyway. No. Like, you're just usually holding it back, sacrificing your creatures. Like, unless the coast is extremely clear, like, but it's never, it never is against Abzan. You're never going to attack your 2-2 into their 4-5 or their 3-3 three, three Warden. So, you know, P and Kieran Nalar is not even a card that lends itself to attacking into Abzan creatures. So it's a very interesting inclusion there. I think you just put them on the having the wrong creatures. Uh, and I think that's the case. And, you know, a lot of people, they, Surge of Righteousness is such a good sideboard card when it is good. Right. It's just not good here. And, and the other thing is, like, the one painful truth for Seth, every time we've seen Seth play it, it's been just fantastic. Well, just and entire weekend in any deck. I would very, I would, I'd be interested to see if Seth wanted to go up to another, a second painful truce, perhaps, because he only has one in the main deck. He also has one in the sideboard. Um, we don't actually know the rest of Seth's yeah. sideboard, just, though. Just like yesterday, we don't yeah. know what uh, Seth's Seth has a, with. a secret 12 sideboard cards or so, because he, we, we can only see about four of them on his deck list before it was cut off, and there's another sheet we just haven't had. Uh, so we can only see about 11 or 12 cards in Seth's list. Um, but it, it, what we see is two infinite obliterations, which aren't, probably aren't going to come in against Abzan, and one Outpost Siege, one Painful Truce. I can see him bringing in Painful Truce in this matchup, because this is kind of a grindy matchup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Who do you think the control deck is in the Abzan versus Mardu matchup? I think it's Seth. Yeah, I think so too. The Mardu list. He just has much more removal. Uh, if you can contain Kenneth's creatures, you can fly over with your, your Hangerback Walker sure. tokens and your Wingmate Rocks and your P and Kieran LR tokens. So it just gives you a lot more. He has a lot more over the top reach. Well, so Seth can have some aggressive draws, but mainly he's just trying to get a little bit of a board advantage before finally just, you know, doing the finishing yeah. blow. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. As the weekend overall, how do you think this tournament's been? You know, has it been your. your uh, what you expected for standard? I think so, but it's also been a lot of like interesting decks. Like I, I really love the Ali Trazi list, the uh, the blue green ramp deck. I also love um, the Mardu list. Mm -hmm. Seth and, and Adam Yurchuk were both talking about this this deck this week, and uh, turns out Seth's been doing pretty well with it. He's seven three right now, or yeah, seven three. Potentially and seven four though. Potentially That's, uh, or potentially eight four, eight or eight, eight three, three rather. Yeah, I mean this I, I mean, this match looks like it's going well for him, and it looks like he's actually clawed his way back from. Uh, Almost losing, you know. It's <laughs> it, it looks like his his deck has been pretty well for him. He he was facing up against the eight eight um, warden the, the first tree, tree yeah. the first one, and then he killed that. And then then it, there's no one plays another one. So now he's, he almost has a second eight eight warden in the first tree to contend with, and um, you know he's doing it. Like he he definitely had the he's crackling doom. We're just trying to see how the judges rule. And even against even if there's a rule like the rhino dies and the the warden of the first tree lives. He still seems yep. like he's fine. He yep. has a five-five hangerback walker, two two wingmate rock tokens, a knight, and a, a seeker of the way. Like that's that's not not nothing. And we don't think I think Kenneth doesn't have much in his hand, so it could very well be um, Seth's game. It's it's still a very close game. Yeah, depending on how how the reeling goes, how the cards fall. Because yeah. I think again, Kenneth Kenneth has had a lot of land the last. And to be fair, Kenneth did draw a lot of lands this game. Yeah, like it's 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 a ridiculous amount of lands. Um, he was basically flooded, He's and one of his non-land cards was the Surge of Righteousness, mm -hmm. as we mentioned, and that's kind of a blank. Like, it's it's literally just a blank. It's, uh, he can actually sacrifice, he can cast it to actually sacrifice one of his own creatures, or destroy sure. one of his own black or red creatures, uh, to gain two life if he has to, but that doesn't seem ideal. I think, I think we've harped enough on this Surge. I think <laughs> it's, uh, it's, yeah, 
it's just not very yeah, good here. I, I feel like I have a surge of negative negative comments sure, to, sure. Like, to I make mean, about that card. Dragonlord Silumgar, Exert Influence, some nice cards. I would love to see a card like Dragonlord Silumgar uh, or Exert Influence come in and steal like a Wingmate Rock or a Hangerback Walker even. That would be fantastic. So it looks like they ruled that Seth did respond to the trigger yes. and uh, killed the Siege Rhino instead. All right, so let's see what happens. Kenneth is still going to take two damage. And he does activate. So Kenneth does get to untap and draw a card. Let's see what happens. It could be something like, I, if it's something like Jeroka's Command, it's actually very powerful. Yeah, a removal spell would be huge. Oh, oh murderous uh, cut. That was, that, that is. That's exactly <laughs> what we're afraid of. What was the other card in his hand? You said it was a wingmate rock? No, s is it? Is it a oh, no, sorry, it was, it was the Surge of Righteous. Right, right, right. right. Don't, come on, <laughs> we've been going over it. The, not, I, I was the Surge of Wrong there, not the Surge of Righteousness. <laughs> surge of Wrongchiousness is more like it. Am I right? Oh, my. Chis? I mean, my murderous Cut was one of the perfect draws here yeah, for Kenneth. Yeah, I agree, and especially when he has, uh, light, like, the Lifelink and Trample. Yep. If he didn't have Trample, that's well, that's one thing, is you have to, even if you kill the blocker, like, it still doesn't Trample over. Yep. Um, but the fact that you he, Seth can block with any number of creatures, he can kill one of them and still trample over and survive, it's just brutal. I mean, so, unlike Kithkin, Warden of the First Tree is activatable multiple times? Yes, exactly. So you're not just making it an 8-8, you're putting five counters on it. So he could even do that again right now and put make it a 13-13. And still have Murderous cut open. Man, that's pretty oh. bad. I feel like uh, that. I feel like this call really. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, obviously it was the. It was real bad for Seth, which is unfortunate. I feel like this is a technicality. Um, I feel like Seth wanted to kill the warden. I, mm, I'm not sure. What if it just turns out Seth has another crackling too? <laughs> <laughs> he just slow rolls the whole time. He's like, oh, by the way, boop. We'll have to see here. So Kenneth is attacking in with the warden. Like we mentioned, it is. Yeah, I had a feeling you might. Potentially a 13 13 here. Murderous cut in hand now as backup. Can you imagine if Seth's just slow rolling a removal spell? Oh, man. We haven't seen any cards in Seth's hand. He's just a little too far back for us. Seth keeps him very close to his chest, you know. It's a That's both f figuratively and literally. Yep. So, as we mentioned, this is the last round. Um, well, this is the last, the last match that's going on in this round. So, once they're done. The pairings and standings for round seven, or not round seven, uh, round five today should be up. And that's the last round before the top eight today. So I'll be bringing you the top eight action after that. So four more rounds today. Uh, round 12 of the main event and the top eight. All right, Seth is choosing. I, he has to, oh no, he can go to one here, right? He can activate the, the hanger back. It's 13. Yeah. Well, oh, but he can murder us. He can oh. kill it. That Seth just might be dead here. This, yes. Would you? I would. Might just activate a shambling vent too. Ooh, this is gonna be. Oh man, this warden of the first replay is just so brutal for Seth. All right, let's see what happens. Oh man, he's gonna pump it. Make my guy a 13-13. Can you imagine if Seth does have the removal spell? He just makes him waste his... He's a, and this is the right play to make. You let him waste his mana. I need another five. <laughs> uh, I don't feel good about this. All right, here we go. Oh, hold on. Mana's... Oh, he's just pumping. Dang it, I was getting so excited. I'm like, mana's being tapped. That should be a five. And murderous cut in response. And that's the... And oh, Seth's going to have to pick up his so cards. That's so disappointing. Right, unfortunate turn of events there. Yeah, that's not the way you want to lose there. You got a Craig Wesco in, in Seth Manfield's corner there.